welcome everyone. I'm so happy you're here. Uh, I'm in Seattle, Washington, and I've been blessed to be part of some of the global community of practice for Art of Hosting in Burkana and from the Four Directions. So there's lots of little weaves into this. So happy to be here with Ecoversities and our conference. Um, I'm really, I think in so many different cultures, we have ways to um, uh, teach some fundamental education around how we sit, move, breathe, and stand, and how to take care of our brains and our bodies. And uh, in today, we're going to be in some experiences of uh, hearing from the stories of the animals, of uh, what the animals have to teach us. This is all part of an early learning curriculum that we have that I've launched here. Uh, and it's a way to teach also around the neuroscience, like how do we take care of our brains and our bodies um, for our children to access their full potential, but also, you know, how stress is in our bodies. And then how do we work with that stress to get our bodies into restoration? So I'm going to encourage people to have their videos on because you're going to get a chance to try on these exercises and we want to hear from you, what you like, what feels good. Uh, and we'll also get to hear a little bit about like, well, where do you hold the stress in your body? Like when there's so many things happening in our world right now, it's easy to hold on to our stress patterns right there and the shoulders I see. We're going to take care of those beautiful shoulders. We're going to talk about how your stress patterns are uh, and exactly what you can do about that. You know, because like as soon as we shed our stress, then all of our energy goes towards our brilliance. And so that's what we're up to. That's unlocking that human potential. Uh, and I'm super happy to have everyone here. Uh, and I see someone else is on the move. Clem Clement was, says she's on the move. So keep moving and be listening and you can try it all out and chat us if you can. Okay. Um, and what I would want to encourage, we're going to go through, if, um, you know, in the curriculum, it starts out and, uh, the, one of the the dogs in the in the curriculum in the book says, "Are my humans amazing? They have all these superpowers, but I'm a little worried about them because there's like there seem like they're a little bit like not all connected to their their brilliance and their superpowers. And it's like, what can all of us animals? We know a lot about superpowers. What can we teach the humans and help them remember their own superpowers? So each of the animals thinks about what do they have in common with the humans." Um, and then what, how can they share their superpowers in order to help the humans um, come more fully into their own? Um, and I love teaching about the smart body. Our bodies are so intelligent. It takes care of us in times of stress, overwhelm, trauma, you know, um, but it also like helps us restore our well-being and takes care of us every day. So we're getting also the body intelligence into education, which has been missing in the West. <laughs> And so not other places, you know, there's, it's foundational to teachings, you know, and it's been foundational to ancient practices. Uh, so let's start with our friend, um, snakes, our first teacher. And with the little ones, we always just say like, so who's scared of snakes? Who loves snakes? And <laughs> you're scared of snakes? You know, <laughs> No, you love them. <laughs> very good. So they'll be a very good teacher for you. And, and what we have in common, and Snake shares with us that, well, well, snakes and humans have so much in common. We both can move because we have these beautiful spines. And I just don't have a body, so I'm way more slithery, you know, but we're the same. Otherwise, we're the same. So let's see if we can find our wavy spine and just notice with your wavy spine how this is what, how you move in different directions is because like snake, you have this beautiful wavy spine. So just find that beautiful wavy spine. And then you can just notice what happens is like, oh, there it is. And they go nice and long with their wavy spines. And this is how we move in different directions. Um, and then put your hands right there on your hips. There's a, a, a basket or a bowl, which is your hips. And then tuck your tuck that the end of your wavy spine underneath and see what happens like when your tail's tucked how is it easy to move your wavy spine how does that feel and then or if you push put that bowl way too far forward how does that wavy spine do and then find the happy middle where now i can sit 
and have my wavy spine at the same time. So now this my pelvic bowl is in a good spot, this hip basket, and now I can move my wavy spine. And then like snake, we're gonna go ahead and perk up our ears. You can think of other animals too that perk up their ears. So all of a sudden there's more space, this little hood of the cobra comes on. <laughs> uh, and you can hear everything. So look left and right, just notice how connected you are. Are you ready to move in any directions as soon as that hood's up, that perking of the ears? And now say, sa. 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 And that beautiful sound of sa, it opens our lungs so we can breathe back in. Mm. So snake being our first teacher, what does snake have to share with you? What do you like? <laughs> what do you notice changes uh, with the teachings of uh, sit wavy like snake? <laughs> sit wavy. <laughs> so when you're on your Zoom call, sit wavy. <laughs> Who'd like to share? What do you notice? That's a nice smooth, more flexibly than I did. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> oh, very good. Like, wow, I even forget that I'm flexible. I'm sitting like this. I'm very rigid, you know, and then, oh, that's all it takes is to sit wavy. <laughs> Who else would like to share? And Andre, you're welcome to, too. Anybody who'd like. Go with the flow. I can share. Thank you. Yes. Share, Teresa. Yes, please share. Is your name pronounced Teresa or Teresa? Teresa, that's fine. Either. Teresa. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I have a hernia in my back and have a lot of like chronic pain from like when I, and I, the thing that it's, it's been a huge teacher. It's been one of the, my biggest teachers. Um, and one of the things that I've learned is that even the most micro of the micro movements yes. um, helps so much. And the worst thing that I can possibly do is to be rigid in sitting or standing or whatever position. Um, and it's that little, yes, yeah, so you'll see me when I'm on Zoom calls. I'm always like fidgeting around. <laughs> and, and that little wave, mm -hmm. keeping a wave in our spine, it gets the cerebral spinal fluid flowing and that nourishes, mm -hmm. coats, soothes all of those nerve roots that are all along your spine get space in between those vertebra and that cerebral spinal fluid goes all around your brain so you're washing your brain it's healing and your brain supporting your brain mm -hmm. yes and so all it takes is that micro move so keeping that cerebral spinal it's a cranial sacral rhythm and we're finding that little rhythm in our body this is our foundational rhythm is this cr cranial sacral rhythm so just the, and even like a millimeter or centimeter of wave. So you don't have to always be wavy this way. You can be little wavy. <laughs> so thank you for a little wavy. <laughs> oh. Yeah, we're learning with the animals and welcome Susan. So snake is our first teacher and it's sit wavy like snake. So take a little moment to do that. Yes. Um. I think Allison said, go with the flow. My inner child loves this exercise. Absolutely mine too. My inner child wrote this curriculum. <laughs> she was in charge. It's the most fun curriculum ever because I. she says, I'm in charge of this one. <laughs> so it's so much fun. Okay, so Snake's our first teacher. And then um, let's see. Let's go to um, the birds as our teachers. Uh, and the birds, are we are designed more like birds than we are like horses, okay? So we have this glorious wingspan, okay? So we're going to have a chance to learn about defying gravity, like working to uh, like gravity is always with us and the birds are the best they know how to work with gravity and so they can teach us so much <laughs> they're masters of gravity you know they know how to float up and they know how to fly down 
So they're masterful in their understanding of how to play in relation to gravity. So I'm going to invite you to play in relation to gravity too. And, and our heads are like weigh 10 pounds. So let your head float down like this and just see how well you think you're going to get off the ground if your head's out in front of you. <laughs> so first lessons of the birds is um, to be uplifted like crane. So just imagine, and you can, if you like, you can do this seated or standing. So you can see, we'll do a little bit standing for sure. But just think about crane and how crane, like their head is uplifted first and their eye gaze is uplifted first. And just like you can let yourself float up a little bit. Okay. And let yourself float up. And then just notice how putting your, like you can put your hands up and then let your eyes lead the way. Look one way and let your eyes lead the way this way. And then look the other way. And let your eyes lead the way. And then your body follows. Your eyes lead the way, your head follows, and then your body follows. And find the simple, beautiful thing of this little flying lesson. If that's too hard on your arms, you could like even do it just with your hands up close to you like this. <laughs> like, And then we're going to play a little bit. Okay, so now we're going to play with our wingspan. And if you're comfortable standing, it's more fun. You're welcome to stay seated if you like, because you can play either way. Um, and just kind of find a way to, to see about um, letting those wings float up all the way and try to find that you're, they see your wing fingers. And so you, you have these beautiful wing fingers. Maybe you didn't know you had wing fingers. And so see if you can let those wing fingers fly all the way up to the top. Maybe they even touch at the top. Oh, look, beautiful wing fingers. I didn't know I had wing fingers. And then let them float down. They float up and they float down. See if you can just let them float up and let your head lead the way upward and float down. Okay. And then... You have, and then you can work with your tail feathers and let your tail feathers do all the navigation this time. So, wow, I have tail feathers and my tail feathers allow me to go in different directions. How beautiful is that? Just guide this. You know, you're flying by the seat of your pants. So just fly by the seat of your pants a little bit in all these different directions. You can fly by the seat of your pants. And then Hummingbirds, they do wavy eights. This is how they stay still in, in space. And so find your wavy eights. You can just like, oh, just like hummingbirds, they stay still in air because they know how to do wavy eights. So find a moment and find this wingspan and see what that's like for you and take a nice deep breath in. We'll do another lesson with birds in a while, but I just want to see what that's like for you. Let's have a seat and just see what do you notice in your body as you're, uh, that, that bird has to teach you about your body, about being uplifted, about this glorious wingspan you have, um, about your tail feathers. <laughs> Let's go ahead and just hear for a moment. What are the teachings of birds that, that, uh, that help unlock the superpowers of your smart body? <laughs> Who would like to share? Ah, uh, we're lighter when we breathe in. <laughs> I know. It's like, whoa, we'll play more with our breath, like breathing in as you go up and then out. Whoo. So like take a deep breath in, which that helps you float up. And then your deep breath out. Whoo. So our wings and our breath power together. So power it up. Ooh. Yes, our strong wings and our strong breath come right together. The lightness of being, the freedom in space. We can, you can fly in all different directions and our bodies love to fly. <laughs> oh my gosh, our wing fingers. Mm. What else would people like to share? I really enjoyed how our heads lean towards where we'd like to go together with our wings. Mm. And it, yeah, I never thought of that, you know, about birds before. It, it felt 
uh, powerful but also elegant too very natural yeah and this lengthening our spine and it's like wow my head leads the way my eyes lead the way when I look that way mm -hmm. I go that way and so this inner elegance that we have of being uplifted this is an inner elegance that I have I have to it's a superpower I have I can be in that inner elegance you know and all it is is being uplifted like crane and there's my inner elegance <laughs> oh and then looking in this direction I float this way and I float this way so lovely so can you feel that inner elegance in you too yes beautiful thank you who else would like to share and welcome darpan sissy could we hear from you would you like to share Welcome, Darpan. We're the animals are our teachers about our smart body. It's we're all we just had a teaching from sit sit wavy like snake, and then we've just been flying with the birds. <laughs> <laughs> so the birds have us uplifted. We found out about our amazing wingspan. So we're 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 flowing and flying. So we'll have some more teachings from birds, and we're going to also get to teach hear some lessons from cat and a few others friends. Yeah. So one of the aspects with the breath is your um your lungs go all the way up to here, so right above your clavicle, above this first rib. Um, so find the top of your lungs. Just feel that top of your lungs. And now just bring your shoulders in, like bring your, roll your shoulders in and take a deep breath. And notice how much breath you can get with those shoulders rolled in. And now we want to open the shoulder gate, which is really opening up those armpits, which is opening that wingspan and find that space that opens those shoulder gates. And for some people, they like to even push their wings so their hands are upward and fly this way a little bit. And then just notice now from this place, you can put your hands in your lap and take another deep breath. So as soon as we get opening these, our armpits, get this wind underneath our wings, then our full lungs are available to us. Now our diaphragm is in the right position that we, when we're flying, it opens up our full lungs for us. And especially if we've been sitting at the computer, it's oftentimes that head's forward, those shoulders are forward. And so we're only breathing shallow. So we have very, maybe 10% of our respiratory capacity. But as soon as we recognize we have a really wide wingspan and this, these wings and our lungs work together, then we can take those deep full breaths. So just notice for yourself the, the contrast between having that, that forward head posture or the shoulders rolled forward and how much you can breathe. And then what happens with your wide wings? How that gets your full lungs open for you. And that gets all this oxygen and circulation to our brains. And that powers our physical mental health. That powers our human potential. So our brains love all this oxygen, <laughs> like turns everything on in our brains. Yeah. Anybody like to share either in chat or verbally? How's that for you? Like that contrast between what happens when we're here and what happens when we're in our flying, when we have our wingspan. Mm -hmm. And welcome to our new guests. We've had snake and bird so far as teacher. We're going to have turtle and dogs. Is, a dog is our teacher and cats. Those are who's left to be our teachers today with the animals about our teachers of our smart bodies uh, and helping us unlock our human potential. And part of our human potential is as we get more oxygen and circulation to our brain, all the parts of our brain that help with our learning, creativity, planning, 
those all get turned on. So we need that focusing on cranial circulation as part of what we're working with. Okay. Uh, let's see, I don't see any chats here. So this thinking about this contrast of opening up our lungs, I just feel my body telling me, give me more of that. Let's move and shake. Okay. So we're going to do shake then because we called that out. And the next teacher is our dog friends. And we're going to learn how to get the wag wave from the bottom to the top. So let's go ahead and just wag your tail. You can wag it forward and back a little bit. You can wag it side to side. You can try a wag in a circle, crazy eights, and just get that. Find out what else moves. When you wag your tail, what else moves? Just notice what else moves. <laughs> and then from there, you know, like I was thinking, well, how do you get the wag wave to the top? So I was watching the animals and what they do is they lengthen, lengthen their spine. So wag your tail and then lengthen your spine and see if the wag wave goes all the way up to the top. <laughs> and so we're taking care of the bottom and top of our spine because that gets that circulation flowing to our brain. So as we're helping neurodevelopment, but also for all of us, we want that circulation and oxygen to our brain. So getting the wag wave all the way up. <laughs> That gets us there. All right, so wag your tail. <laughs> what else moves? Okay, so that's our next teacher. And now turtle is our next teacher. So we're gonna have turtle and then we'll have cat. So uh, how many people like wag your tail first? How many people like that one? This is a perennial favorite, by the way. So you can wag your tail when you walk. You can wag your tail when you're hungry. <laughs> you can wag your tail when you're happy. Now try your sad dog tail. You notice what happens. Like sometimes dogs are sad and they're sad dog tail. And it's just like, oh, they're sad dog tail. Notice what happens in the rest of your body when your sad dog tail comes on. Sometimes when I feel sad, I feel sad dog tail. And then I just, even if sometimes I can't even want to get out of bed because I've got sad dog tail. So when the tailbone's tucked, it's a, it's a depressive state in the nervous system too. So we can feel a depressed mood when that happens too. So, but, and I can just then just wag my tail a little bit. Feels a little better. So I think our four-legged friends are happy. The humans are catching on and this gets all that circulation and fluid flowing in our body. We're back to that fluid body that, you know, uh, and so once we've gone from our rigid body to our fluid body with that, okay. Um, so let's think about, um, Let's do our cats next. And, and um, cats, they're really good at relaxing. So they can teach us to relax. So snake helps us be alert and ready to learn because we're alert as we get into that posture with our, with our ears perked up. Uh, and then cat helps us learn to relax. Uh, and so these we're learning to go through these different states um, and also can help us sleep. So sometimes after my sessions, people like a little nap. Um, but we're going to go through with cat today. There's many cat lessons in the curriculum, but the one we'll do today is about um, how humans purr. And the cats notice that there's a lot of different sounds that humans make. Some of them are scary sounds. Some of them are um, uh, grumpy sounds. Some of them are sad sounds. Some of them are soothing. So, and the soothing sounds are the ones that we're focusing on. And we're gonna try three different sounds, soothing sounds, and you get to find out which one works for you um, and which one's most like a purr for you and what's it like to purr. So cats, um, I took um, purring lessons from my daughter's cat, Dwight, and they even do circular purring. So if you want advanced purring lessons, I advise you to get a, a, a coach who's a cat. And you learn to, to purr like them. And, and you'll notice like the purr, like their whole body purrs. Okay. So we're going to, you're going to feel how much of your body that you have purring. Um, but, and then you can learn the circular breathing version of that. Like they purr on the inhale and the exhale. So I, I encourage advanced purring lessons um, after our session today. Uh, and so let's just start with, um, there's a sound, let's start with the sound of shh. And, and some cultures, that's a scolding sound. Other cultures, it's a comforting sound. So we'll just see if we can find a comforting sound of shh. Like, 
a mama rocking and holding her baby. You might even just put your hand on your chest and have a little pat. And see if you can feel the soothing sound of shh. And notice where you feel that in your body, where you feel that padding sound, how that is for you. Find that soothing sound of shh. And I notice I even find a little rock while I'm shushing. <laughs> I don't know what that is, but that's hardwired into me. Maybe it's me being a mama. You know? <laughs> Maybe it's just me being human though. I don't know. So finding that sound of shh that soothing sound for ourselves. And maybe we've offered that soothing sound to another little one and just find it for yourself and feel what that is like. And see if you notice the relaxation reflex. When does it, what is your body? What's it like when your body relaxes? Let's try another sound. Let's try. Mm, mm, mm. Put your just hand on your chest and see if you can feel that. Mm. Can you feel the vibration of mm in your chest? Mm. This is one I can feel like the waves of mm further in my body. And if you have a yawn come on, that's a good sign you have a relaxation reflex going on. And they're really good. Oh. And you can put your hand on your belly too. And you see if you can feel your mm all the way down in your belly. Mm. See if you can feel your mm go all the way down to your feet. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I see a big cat stretch going on. So if you want to join uh, Vish Vishva in a big cat stretch. Mm. You can feel your, mm, there's my cat stretch. Mm. And now let's try our third purr sound. Everybody gets to find their favorite. What's their favorite purr sound? Let's try the sound of ah. Oh. Relax your jaw, find ah. Ah. That might be a yawn or a sigh. Ah. Make a really loud ah. Ah, I notice where you feel that in your body. Ah. And now make a really quiet ah. At night when I'm going to sleep, I have this silent purr, this silent ah going on. And this silent little sound, this silent little quiet purr. That, uh, that audible sigh allows for another breath to come in. So it helps me exhale and inhale. It's this lovely sound wave. Our bodies are made of sound, so you can feel your sound wave. And if you feel like a big cat stretch before you, as part of your relaxing, go for that. A big cat yawn. Oh, and just notice what turns on that relaxation reflex that has your whole body relaxing. Mm. And then just take another moment and find your favorite purr sound. And just pick a couple more moments with your favorite purr sound. So now you've had your purring lessons. <laughs> What's it feel like to relax? What's the superpower of cat that we share with cat? What's what does that feel like? I I really appreciated your guidance, Theresa, uh, when you said like we were in doing the mm sound here and then we took it to our belly and then to our food it felt like the moment you said it i started to feel it yeah <laughs> um, mm. and uh, i think my favorite would be the mm one mm. 
yeah, it felt uh, like both very relaxing, but also something like I was having something really enjoyable, you know. Mm. Enjoyable. Yeah. I know those pleasant, those pleasant feelings, those pleasant sensations, they send signals of safety to our brain. And it's this feedback loop. So like the, mm, the ah, it's just like, oh, there, that. It's just like, it, it goes, relaxes me more. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> oh, you're so much more relaxed right now, Sissy. Yes, they're just such great teachers. And so, you know, we can come from this restoration, relaxation in everything we do. Like once we know, oh, this is how I turn on my relax. I can be more relaxed anywhere I go. I can silent purr in front of anyone. They don't even know it. So I want to introduce you to silent purring as your superpower. Okay. And sometimes you can loud purr. And others will purr with you. And then you can, you can mm anywhere too. Mm. Mm. So everybody just say yum, mm, yum, 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 mm, feel yum, mm. and mm, get your mouth watering, mm, yum, and now say yuck, yuck, notice what happens with your face, this is a stress reflex, yuck is a stress reflex, it's the gag reflex, yuck, now say yum, mm, mm. So you can yum at people. They're gonna mirror you. So uh, they'll yum. They'll you. They won't even know that they're mirroring you back because they'll mirror you more than they hear you. So you can yum at your friends. Mm. And if you yuck at your friends, go ahead and yuck at your friends here on the screen. Everybody yuck at each other. Yuck. <laughs> so what happens here? It's like our, when our stress reflexes. It shows up here in our faces too. And so what well, if we're yumming at each other? <laughs> mm. So I encourage you to yum or to silent awe as a superpower. Or shh. Yeah. Hey. Anyone else like to share? Uh, so we now have snake, sit ready, right? Snake, this activating that cranial circulation, getting that circulation to our brain. We have dog who also helps us get cranial circulation to our brain with wag your tail. Uh, we have our bird first flying lesson to help us to defy gravity. We're always in relation to gravity. So gravity gets us down and then we have to like be uplifted like crane. Gravity gets me down again. I'm sitting at my desk too long. And then be uplifted like crane. So this whole dance of gravity, the whole dance of flight. Uh, and then our superpowers we want to, I want to share about um, turtle is our next one we, we want to share. And then we're going to have one more flying lesson um, uh, today too. Okay, so one, one last final flying lesson for all of us. Um, but turtle's last teaching is about a shell. And all of us, um, turtles have their shells on the outside and humans, they have their shells on the inside. It's our bones that protect are our protection for our vital organs. Uh, and right now I have a free the turtles campaign going on. And I hope all of you will join my free the turtles campaign because there is an epidemic of turtle, um, turtle posture going on, um, turtle reflex. Um, and I really would like your help in freeing the turtles. So I want to introduce you to your turtle shell so you can know when you're in it. And then we're going to, we're going to use turtles going to give us some advice for how to get out of it. So go ahead and tuck your tailbone underneath or bring in your shoulders and then try to move. You can see this is a, a latching mechanism and it's really hard to move. This is because this is the body's protective pattern to, um, to protect our vital organs. Like if there's a threat, I can go into my shell in a nanosecond. <laughs> and I've protected my neck. I've protected my vital organs. Um, it also what's happened when I sit at my laptop <laughs> um, is what happens when I grab my phone. So we want to use Turtle's advice for how to get out of this together. Um, 
So now what I would like to invite you to do is now, if it, hopefully everybody's found their shell and they can see how hard it is to get out. <laughs> so we're gonna get out just like turtle does. We're gonna swim out. So go ahead and put your hands out in front of you, your flippers. And then put your hands all on back around. And we're gonna take three swimming breaths like turtle. So go ahead and put your turtle and swim all around. And one more, swimming all around, finding that space in your shoulders. I'm gonna do one more swimming breath because I feel good. Finding your swimming tail. And now we wanna work with our feet a little bit and get our feet moving, kicking like, so just like, Imagine your feet are like plugging into one foot in the floor and then the other. It's like swimming for turtle. So get your feet also. And notice how your feet can help you come out of your shell. Okay. So go ahead and let's go back into our shell for a second. Like, oh, there, I found myself. I'm in my turtle shell. I can't move. Now go ahead and just do one foot and then the other. Plant one foot and then the other. Just use your feet to get you out. And notice how you come out of your shell. Now just look at your hand like you're looking at your phone and notice if you go into your shell. Oh, I got in my turtle shell. Okay, I'm gonna use my swimming to get out, everybody. Get, let's swim our way out together. Then we reopen those lungs. Remember our lungs come all the way up to here. So we wanna open that space for our lungs. And it's the shoulder gate right here that opens that up for us. Okay, so once we get that shoulder gate open, then there we go. Mm, so what does turtle have to teach us? What do you like about the turtle superpowers? That we have a shell, just like turtle, and we come out just like turtle. <laughs> Observations, what do you notice? Turtle also yawns. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then I yawn because ah, our lungs have room now so we take a deep breath as soon as we're out of our shell we always do that it's like such a gift yeah and we didn't even know we were in our shell mm. yeah and how when any movement takes us out of our shell yes any movement takes us out of our shell we can, we can move our shoulders, we can move our feet, we can lengthen our spine, but we need this movement to come out of our shell. So we can find, I love my feet. If I just animate my feet, there, my whole body comes out of my shell. And I'm gonna go into it. So I just wanna to remember to come out. Beautiful. Anyone else like to share? Andre, how are you doing? I'm good. Just uh -huh. feel that energy. I felt like with the turtle, like we kind of, it's not that bad also to be like this sometimes, yeah. but the movement is really liberating, like, oh, <laughs> to right. get nice. Yeah. And what I find is if I, as I'm watching people, there's a lot of people with this forward head posture now. Um, and it has this breathing shallow because our lungs come out to here. So it's not bad for a short time, but because we're crimping our breath and cutting circulation off to our brain, it's not good for the long time. So, so we want to make sure we get out, <laughs> but it's fine. I mean, turtles go in, we, they, they have to get out to eat and they have to get out to move. We don't have to get out to eat or to move. And so that's the only problem. <laughs> <laughs> so if we go with the turtle medicines, like we could just like, oh, we just have to remember to get out. We're just fine to go in, but we just need to know that come out. And it's like how beautiful that they have these beautiful shells that they're coming in. We also have turtle stretch. Like you can see pictures of turtles after they come out of their shells and they stretch out like this. So here they have, they have to move this out here in order to be out of their shells. So they're very good at turtle stretching. So I just want a turtle stretch after I've been on my phone for a little while. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. I've been living as a turtle and feeling that it could be wonderful to live more as a snake. And 
Absolutely. So we want to live more, less as turtle, more as snake, <laughs> you know, because when I'm in my turtle shell, I don't have any mobility in my spine and I have very little circulation going on to my brain. Okay. So my organs are compressed and depressed. So as soon as you go ahead and tuck in your turtle shell, and notice what happens to all your organs, what happens to your heart and your lungs, what happens to your stomach and all of your digestion organs, they're all compressed or depressed. So we want to get this, get ourselves into our turtle stretch and then be more like snake. Okay. So that allows us to um, get like, get that, those lungs so they can be in restoration. Okay. So, and our bodies have protective mechanisms, their stress reflex and we have restore. So we're turning on these aspects of our smart body so that we can spend more time in restoration. And this support system is always here, um, but I have to turn it on. So if I'm sitting like this, that capacity for me to be in restoration is here, but it's turned off. It's like I'm in my shell. And so I may not even be conscious that just by sitting here, I'm, I'm only breathing shallow and I can't breathe fully. So, but if I open up, get out of my turtle shell and then go a little more like snake, now I have my full lung capacity here for me. And so this is my body in restoration. And I've turned on my smart body and all those, that structures of that smart body, that support system. Yeah. Okay. Sissy, how does that sound? Yeah. Okay. So this is where we were smart body. My body works in protection and my body works in support. So I wanna turn on the support system so that this smart body, I can get all that oxygen circulation to my cells, my brain. Uh, and then I, then I get smarter because I have more circulation to all these parts of my brain. <laughs> that I like. <laughs> um, and then I'm gonna lock up for some other reason. So I just need to air out my wings a little more. Let's do one more flying lesson. Um, and then I'll just tell you a little more if you want to come play with me some more um, where where we are and we'll go from there. Um, so let's see. The I want to do one more flying lesson. So if you feel comfortable, you can stand. And we're going to feel how um, to how our wings power our breath. The strong wings and our strong breath. And so... Just letting those wings float up one more time. And first let your let that your head lift, like, oh, there, my head's lifting off. I'm uplifted. Be uplifted first. Wow. And when I'm walking, I can be uplifted. When I'm sitting, I can be uplifted. So this whole gesture of being uplifted and see what happens. And now let's go ahead and take a nice deep breath in. And then power breathe out all the way out, make a sound wave all the way out. And then make a sound as you exhale all the way out. <sighs> and then go ahead and um, on the next breath, put your hands under your armpits. You want to just feel what it's like to breathe in your full lungs. So notice, um, just feel your body breathing and feel how your your um, lungs open on this, on the inhale. Your lungs expand. Your your ribs expand, and feel your ribs hugging your lungs on the exhale. And if that's not comfortable, you can also put your hand on your chest and on your belly to feel. But feel those ribs opening on the inhale. Side to side. How wide is your breath? maybe you can make it a little wider and then just notice how deep is your breath how if you can feel your um your self breathing in the back of your wings and then feel how long your breath is just make an audible sigh on the exhale this is a sound wave let that sound wave go out Oh, and it's like a wave on the beach. Don't you don't push it, but it goes out as far as it does, and then you let the wave come back in. We'll let the sound wave go out. Oh. And the wave comes back in. It goes out. And 
And just feel this deep inward connection to yourself. The power of your breath. And take some time to thank your body. Your body's breathing for you 20,000 times a day, mostly unconsciously. We're always creating new muscle memory. We're always, so we want to create these muscle memories of ease. Releasing our stress reflexes and exercising relaxation. And just thank all the animals today. Thank snake, thank turtle, um, thank the cats and the dogs, thank all the birds, just for being our teachers to help us to understand how this smart body works. And just maybe be very observant of what it takes for us to fly and bring in our full capacity. So beautiful. I just want to talk a little bit more about this stress reflex and this restoration reflex. There's been a lot of things that have, you know, like um, if people have experienced some sort of traumatic event or if they're just in stress a long time, these stress reflexes, they wire over and over. It gets deep in our muscle memory. So our stress reflexes, we can be on the, you know, in a fight and flight all the time or in a freeze all the time. And those patterns like freeze all the time. That means I'm in my shell a lot. So those organs are compressed and depressed. Fight and flight, usually all my shoulders are up by my ears a lot. I feel a lot of tension in my shoulders. So uh, anyone who has tension in their shoulders or neck, it's like a lot of things you might say, oh, what helps me do that? It helps me un unwind it. If I just open up my hands like this before I type. So you can open this up, get that, and then, and then, uh, type or you can just do sit wavy like snake while you type <laughs> so all these things can support us in our daily life yeah Vishva. so i went for a 10-day meditation camp yeah and you don't speak and i went there because there was something troubling me and then there were no words for 10 days and on the ninth day or tenth day, ninth day in the tenth day on the evening, I wanted something to happen and something was happening, but then it just took shape, you know. Wherever I would take my attention, it would start throbbing there. My attention would create a throbbing. And the first time I got it, it was a delayed response, so I did not understand it. And the only place it would not throb was when I got it between my, on my root chakra. Yeah. I knew something of that sort, but there, my attention was there and there would be no throbbing. Even if I moved my attention one inch here or there, I would start creating throbbing. Right. But this is not the story that I want to share. Someone told me about, uh, my belly button having something of healing. I did not know. I came out of my yoga flow and I had injured my toe that day. And then I just focused my breath on, on my belly button. And then I focused on my toe somehow and I lost everything, all control somehow. And my toe stopped hurting even though it was black. What did I let go? I don't know. But I let go of something. And that's our smart body. You know. So it's like our healing capacity is immense. Mm -hmm. Yes, our belly buttons are so powerful. It has so much memory. Mm -hmm. And why did this come up? Is because when we were breathing in the lungs over here, when we were focusing on the breath here, I was on my toes and I was almost as if I wanted to fly away. <laughs> I was on my toes and I wanted to fly away. 
so beautiful you found it you know you found it you found that upliftment so beautiful thank you so um our website is my website our website is power of ease keys.com um and i have my mailing list and things i send things out um there's i've been um we have class coming up and then for for the lessons to share um in november but and then also you know that's it's in the u.s economy the way it's priced but i also work from different gift cultures so just so you know that i work in many economies <laughs> for how to have uh to share those teachings um, and these and be in community with our global community so just know that um and um the animal economy they've been very generous with me uh in asking me to share their teachings um to help the humans <laughs> so um it's so beautiful um and and are reconnecting with the intelligence of the smart body that still place in the at the root chakra at right at the base of the the pelvis that you speak of there's four bones the sitting bones on left and right the tailbone in the front and the um tailbone in the back and the pubic bone in the front when we find that balanced bowl and that wavy spine it's a very still place and 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 you called us to that so finding that that happy middle with ourselves as we're completing here today you can use those four bones you can move that pelvic bowl into the place where you can feel like you can find your wavy spine and you have that strong bowl and that's the place where the root chakra is planted and now the energy flow can go through the whole body and we have our feet animated to the ground so you can feel those connections. There's 70,000, tens of thousands of nerve endings in the bottom of your feet and you feel that deep connection with source and the upliftment that opens that circulation to the brain and to the third eye and to the midbrain. So all those little places we can just, as we turn those superpowers on and that all of our intelligence, our this whole field starts working, this healing that we, this healing capacity gets opened. And that's the place we're inviting each other to meet. <laughs> so thank you, everyone. It's just been an honor being with you. Uh, and I'll stay around if there's a couple more questions. And Andre, what else would you like to say to close? Yes, thank you so much. That is, it was really nice. I felt like losing, like, yeah, that was like super. <laughs> yes and i would just invite everybody to stay fluid i mean we're mostly made of sound we're mostly wave i mean we're 70 percent water so you're mostly wave <laughs> so just remember to stay fluid <laughs> stay wavy everybody <laughs> i'll post also your email on the chat we have like the reimagine education chat so yes. whoever that's oh. and then sissy we're coming i'm coming to brazil in uh in coming up in i'm coming to sao paulo so in uh january so yeah. great everyone thank you thank you so much just in case in 30 minutes we have a cafe which is like a space to share at we do breakout rooms we just hang out to get to meet other people from all over the world and this session, like others, will also be uploaded to YouTube with all the information from Teresa. Teresa. <laughs> and, yeah. and if you have like any harvesting, any ideas, any thoughts, please put it in the harvesting document and that it's on the chats. And yeah, that's on my side, but we can hang out if you want to keep talking. <laughs> that was just a bit. Thank you so much. That's wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. It's great. Yeah.